All right, folks, we got a little 40 forward back for a starter issue. This thing intermittently engages fine. Other times it grinds and it sounds horrible. Typical on a GM Chevy starter, a lot of times you have that. So on a lot of your GM stuff, you got to look and see where the Bendix here engages in with your flywheel. So I can see where they put some washers and they tried to shim this thing down. There's actually a shim kit for these things and you actually use a paper clip and when that Bendix, that pinion gear engages, you wanna have about a paper clip's worth of clearance between the inside of, in between the teeth of the, the flex plate or flywheel and the, the pinion on the starter. And that's kind of how you shim them and you get them to where they get the proper engagement. So we're going to get this thing off and I can see where they just use some washers, which are really not right. It's probably shimmed. I can tell it looks like it's shimmed out too far. Okay, folks, let me show you something. This is how I check on a GM. So I take my start, uh, a battery that I have and I use a power probe. Power probe's your friend on any kind of old car to do electrical, start any of this stuff. So I've unhooked all the wires. The battery is disconnected from the car, but I put my little ground probe, my ground side on, from my probe onto the starter. And then I'm just, all I want to do is engage the solenoid. So I'm going to engage the solenoid here. And then now I can see, I can actually see where the starter is shimmed out away. Yeah. So I'm gonna get my paper clip, but it's, this is the problem we're having. It's too far away. And I'll get the paper clip here in a moment and you'll see, but hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, my paper clip is wallering all over the place on this thing, folks. And I'm just hooking this thing back up again to the starter, to the ground it. And then I'm gonna put my paper clip here again. Here. Here, I mean it is all over the place and also I want to show you here's the washers they used you can see that they just use some wash I suppose it, it works but that's way too thick that washer is way too thick I'm gonna show you here in a moment the shims that come with the starter and it's out too far where it's obvious and the, what was probably happening is if it's too close it crashes the bendix the the pinion into the flywheel so it won't necessarily engage it has tapers on the teeth to keep it from doing that but if you have it on especially on a gm i mean you can see where it was starting to eat it the flywheel the flex plate's not real happy and it wasn't going to be long it's going to eat this flex plate up but you can see see all those marks right there see all the high points it was not making good contact. So we're going to get in. I'm going to show you the shims in just a moment. All right, we've got our old starter removed here, and I don't know what brand this is. It may have been an okay starter. I, I don't know. One time it may have been okay. But this is our new Power Master starter that I bought from Summit. And this is part number from Summit. I guess it's a 9112 made by Power Master, and they have the instructions here, and they show you exactly what I was showing you. They show, and th this is very important. So it comes with a shim to, to actually remove the block, and you can actually clock this starter. This is a clockable starter. It comes with a shim, it shows you the measurement, what they want, 100 thousandths between the pinion and the, fl and the flex plate. So there's that, and that's how you can adjust it with this. I'm going to install it first and make my measurements. And then, if you look, here's what I was talking about with the paper clip. They, they talk about a wire, but I'm using my paper clip, which is actually about 28 thousandths thick. And that's what they want you to be able to stick that in. I just shim it till I can get it as close as possible, but not if I can't get the paper clip in there, then obviously I shim it out just enough. They had washers in this thing. Uh, this is the washers that uh, come with the bolts, but. There were washers in here they were using because they probably didn't have the shims. Here are the two different shims. This applies to your Buick Olds, Pontiac, and Cadillac as well. Chevrolet has a, I believe a, it's 
it's a caddy corner uh, diagonal bolt arrangement. Your this will work on either Buick, Olds, Pontiac, just like it will Chevrolet because it has also the cross bolts. So it's a very versatile. You look in here, there's three Allen, Allen bolts, and this is how you clock your starter if you've got a header, like we have shorty headers. I don't think I'm gonna have to clock it, but I'm gonna see. So I can move this whichever way I wanna move it. But we're gonna go ahead and put this in, and we're gonna take and use our power probe, and we're gonna see how much clearance we have between the pinion and the flex plate. All right, so I'm gonna have to clock my, my solenoid, my starter on the mounting block. I was afraid of this. The solenoid is hitting the tapered side of the back of the block, so I can't line up my mounting holes. So I'm gonna have to remove these three bolts. It's not that big of a deal, but alas, I'm still gonna have to do it. So I'm gonna remove these three bolts. I'm gonna clock the solenoid out to the right front fender. I'm just gonna go one hole, because I think that's all that I need. Okay, so I've got my Allens loose. I'm going to clock my starter with the solenoid one hole to the right, so I'm gonna move my block one hole over to the left. Yep, as you can see, there's your holes. This is where that shim would go if I need to back it out. So, just so everybody sees it, I'm gonna put my thumb over this hole here. I get this screw out. Now I'm gonna put this screw back in where my thumb's at. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna clock it. Okay. I've reclocked our solenoid, fits like a glove now. Now the first thing I wanna do is go to this measurement right here. They want 100 thousandths or more. They don't show a max. I'm sure that there is a max, but it's probably never really been an issue. But I actually have 130, 130 thousandths with all of my gauge, and I'll show you where I'm measuring. So I am good, I am golden. I'm actually at 130 right here between the pinion and the flex plate. So we're good. Now we're gonna check engagement. Okay, I'm gonna to have to shim my starter because we're crashing into the flex plate. See that? We're crashing into it. So I'm gonna to have to pull the starter back and put one of the shims on. Okay, I use both shims, but you can see it's better, but it still needs to come out some more. See? not fully engaging because it's still too close. So we're gonna have to shim it out. Luckily I have some GM shims here in my toolbox. So luckily I have the individual shims and you can do these one bolt at a time and it's got the tab right here. So what I do is I back both starters down but I don't remove the bolts. I just let the starter come down to allow me to drop one bolt at a time and slide this in. Just a little trick, I couldn't get my big meat hooks in there really well enough, so I just took my long magnet and I put it on the back of the tab and I just slid it in. Just went right here and, I mean, it's, maybe it's just me being lazy, I don't know, but drop the bolt, put it in. More shim. All right, now we got engagement. So I'm gonna get my paper clip I'm gonna make sure I get my paper clip in and we should be good. Okay, I'm gonna put my paper clip in. It's already kind of still there. Looks like we're good. Okay, folks, that concludes it. So we got our starter in and we didn't need to use any shims at all. When we took the original starter out, they had some washers on there that shim that starter way down. And 
a couple things I had forgot and I learned on this, on the instructions, the pinion only needs to engage the, the uh, flex plate or the flywheel 50 to 75%. It doesn't have to come all the way out because it has to return. So we got that shim. We didn't use any shims at all, actually. Got the starter installed, use our 30 thousandths paper clip, and it's on the money now. You just gotta, some of these engines, these GMs, you'll have to shim them. And there's different shim kits. You've got some that have, they're cut in half, and you can always cut these in half. You can actually use the Oldsmobile Pontiac ones and just cut them and you can slot them in. And there's the ones that have the slots, but I digress. Let's see how she sounds. So, we used our PowerMaster starter from Summit. We had, didn't have to reclock the solenoid over one hole to get the solenoid to not contact the block, but it actually gave us more access to get to the wires, especially the top wire goes to the solenoid. But that's it. This thing is a pleasure to drive. I can't tell you how much fun it is uh, now that we got the fuel injection all perf perfected, the fuel system, the Pertronics, we did also make an adjustment on the 700R4 transmission. One thing I noticed when I put the Petronics in, no matter where I put the timing, it had a bad clatter when you'd go uphill. And then it dawned on me that it wasn't downshifting like it should. And the reason why it was clattering, it was staying under a load. So when you go up a hill, you'd clatter. So I made a slight adjustment on the low car adjustment and these 700 r4s let me tell you my experience with them they're, they're good transmissions they're not bad transmissions at all but they're extremely sensitive to line pressure you've got to have enough line pressure to make keep them happy so now that we got that down that kick down hooked up and you've got enough line pressure the clatter is completely gone going up hills she just she kicks down like she's supposed to this is not putting your foot into it in or, or anything like a modern car so anyway that concludes it with the starter on the 40 ford i think i'm gonna go the long way to our friend mike's house he told me to go enjoy it and drive it i think that's what i'm gonna have to do <laughs>